Like we're going to be starting our regular board meeting scheduled for today, June 28th. Start off with a opening items. Call to order. Trustees present this evening are Trustee Romero, Trustee Ciro Calderon, Trustee Castillo, and Trustee Alvarado, with Trustee Lorenzo Calderon Jr. absent. You have a quorum. Thank you. A2, Pledge of Allegiance. Ms. Bravo, can you lead us in that, please? So moving on to B, I think we can do it after. You want to do it right now? Yeah, you want to. You can do it right now. So Mr. President, I'll ask uh, if we can amend our agenda just this evening. If we can move at item H1 and possibly make it item B1. I uh, second that. So motion by Mr. Castillo, second by myself, Alvarado. All those in favor, please state aye. 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 All those in favor, Romero, Calderon, Castillo, and myself. So moving on to B, public comments. We have one, Maria Bravo. Good evening, everyone. My name is Maria Bravo. I am an employee here at Calexico Unified School District, and I'm also a classified member at large for um, Chapter 399. And I'm here to speak about negotiations. I'm not part of negotiations at this time, but I was part of the negotiations team when the equity clause was brought about. Actually, I wrote that language. If you or any one of you need history on it, you can always ask me, because I wrote that language. And that equity clause was board approved on July 10th, 2008. So it does exist. It is in place. The reason it was made and put into language was in order to protect all classified employees and so that they can get equal, equal pay just like any other bargaining unit, so that they are not forgotten, so that they are not ignored is the reason as to why we put this equity clause in place. So today I'm here in support of the negotiations team. Please consider, apply what is due to us, and finalize the 16-17 and the 17-18 school year. We have a lot of 10-month and 11-month employees that left the school year. And they do not make as much money as any other bargaining group, both represented and unrepresented. And they left for the summer without any pay. It's not fair to them because they are dedicated employees. These employees are your proctors that take care of the schools, your instructional aides that teach and tutor the students here at Calexico Unified. That's just a few. And you also have the cafeteria employees that feed the children of Calexico Unified. We go beyond of what is called on our job description. Every single year, every single day, we are there to support. We are there to take care of the children. So we expect to get paid as well. Please finalize this agreement. And for the attorney, well, you need to be more open, more honest, and more professional, because I'm sure that when you pass that bar exam, you also had to pass an ethical class. Please, thank you. Moving on to B1, it's going to be H1, correct? And that is the Calexico Educational Foundation Mini Grants Awards.
Good evening. I'm Valerie Cantu Clavery, president of the Clexico Educational Foundation. We are your nonprofit arm. We give out scholarships every year and many grants to encourage creativity and to continue educating our students in our community. And this, the um, scholarships that we give out are for seniors who want to continue their education and continuing education once they're in college so that they're not left behind. They continue on and we help them out through their undergraduate years and their graduate years. So in addition to that, we give out many grants to teachers who have innovative and creative projects, and we're very proud of our teachers because they have some wonderful projects, and we're very happy to be able to support them in these things that cannot get grants or um, this sort of support from either the school district or from the federal or state government. So the first one that we have, oh, and let me mention that we gave out $47,000 this year in scholarships and many grants. And to a total of 87 students. And every year we give out more money because we have more support and that's a really beautiful thing. So I'm glad to share that information. Okay. The first one is for Calexico High School First Robotics and that's $1,000. Who's our representative for First Robotics? Get up, get up, get up. <laughs> you, look, you look a little surprised. <laughs> I think you knew about it. And this is your whole robotics team. Good luck this year, guys. Um, let me, okay. Yeah, everybody get together. And this money is particularly used to p by parts that it's needed to design, create, and improve the robots. Who's taking pictures? Is that for, <laughs> is that for, are you from the district? Oh wait, let's get another one so we can send it to the press. I didn't think of that because I, I don't think of that sort of thing. He can do it, he can give it to you. Okay. You can share. Okay, okay, that's really good. Right. Well, no, they're already up there. We should do another one. Okay, we should do another one. On behalf of the um, Calexico First Robotic Program, um, I'd like to thank Calexico Educational Foundation for um, uh, awarding this mini grant to us, which we will use to um, buy consumables, buy parts. Um, robotics is an expensive, you know, it could be a hobby, it could be a sport. Um, we think of it more as a sport. And so what we're gonna do is invest and try to buy some other, you know, other materials that we wouldn't have uh, had a chance to buy without these funds. So on behalf of the First Robotics team, and the students of Collective High School, I want to thank you guys for awarding us this mini grant. And originally, we had had a student that was going to come up here and speak because we like for students to work on their speaking skills. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure uh, he's 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 um, glad he didn't speak today. But, <laughs> but thank you very much. And um, <laughs> Leo, <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. We really appreciate it.
Our second one is for the Circle of Friends at the Calexico High School. Let me get the little description out here. I thought I had it in order. Okay, who's the representative who's going to be accepted? This is a school inclusion program for students with and without disabilities. So um, on behalf of the Circle of Friends um, Club at our school, I would like to thank you so much for this, uh, this money. It's going to really, really help us out uh, to make our, our path to inclusion um, easier to obtain. And um, you know, we will also be able to use it to um, create many wonderful friendships between these students. Um, you guys are very cordially invited, anybody, to come to our club on Tuesdays at lunch so you can see the amazing things that happen with our students. Um, thank you so much, it, it's been wonderful, thank you. I just, I, I love it when the student speaks, so I'd like for her to just say, this is Stephanie, so she wants to say something. Okay, so, this great ex circle of friends has been a great experience for me because like while, while I was helping my buddy, I just, I felt really great because like giving like this huge part of me to someone else and knowing that that person is appreciating so much, no matter how small it can be, it just means a lot to me. And when I was hanging out with them in lunch every Tuesday, I, I f <laughs> sorry. Um, they were all full of happiness and joy, and it just, I don't know how like to explain how this feels, but it just feels like so good. It just brings so much positive vibes and everything. Yeah. So that's what yeah. I'm gonna say. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm so thankful, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Okay, I, <laughs> I just have to say that being circle of friends is something very cute because it just makes you happy to see them happy that they're just like us and they're really funny too. They, <laughs> so yeah. They're really kind com company yeah. to have. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so thank you again so much for your support. Um, I appreciate it. Do you, have any, do you have any plans for the summer? Do you have any activities planned for the summer? In the summer. Um, my last day of work is tomorrow, so, <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, you know, really, no, I, I'm, I'm actually in the process of applying for um, 
a grant through Special Olympics to hopefully get to become a unified, um, so that Clexico High School could become a unified sports school, because we already do a lot of unified sports activities as far as having um, kind of like an inclusion PE class at the high school um, with the regular education students. And we did various sports activities, like um, we went bowling this year, uh, cornhole tournament, kickball, modified um, volleyball, badminton, and, and the PE department is very um, supportive. So I'm hoping to be accepted for that too, just so we can expand the circle of friends a little bit more into um, sports related activities too. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We're really proud of all of our teachers and our students who have these wonderful ideas and follow through with these wonderful things. We do have one more that we're not presenting today. Um, it's the dual school culinary arts technology class. They're at a competition today, so they can't receive the award, but they will be awarded in August. I just wanted to do that. You'll see them, you'll see us again <laughs> in August. Uh, I think Hortensia has something to say, thank you. Congratulations, students, and congratulations to our teachers, too, and our school psychologist, of course. But we are going to have something of Circle of Friends when we come back in August. Um, so that's after Mrs. Sturdivant's vacation. What we want to do, what we want to do is with the Diego Galvan um, Foundation, every year they've been donating about 100 backpacks with school supplies. So this year we want to have, it's um, Diego Galvan's, um, it's Juan Galvan's fifth anniversary of passing. And he was one of our students starting at Rockwood, then he De Anza, then Calexico High School, IVC, and San Diego State. So what we want to do, students, it's not going to be a, it's going to be a surprise to everybody else, but not to you. We want to give you backpacks and school supplies, and we're going to integrate it with Circle of Friends. Okay. So thank you, and congratulations again. And thank you to Mr. Castillo. He was the one with the idea for the foundation. Um, he brought, he's part of our board, so thank you very much for bringing the mini grants. That's something new that we have started here in Calexico Unified. So thank you, Mr. Castillo. Thank you. Well, thank you. Now we're going on to see announcement of convening to closed session. The board will now go into closed session to discuss the items referenced in item D of the agenda. In terms of item D6 and anticipated litigation, one of those items involves the release or termination of a former employee. Thank you. All right, good evening. Going off with E, recoming to open session. It's now 7.08. F, announcement of actions taken in closed session. In closed session tonight, the uh, board uh, uh, voted to approve a written decision on an appeal um, with the written decision to be issued, uh, and it's a personnel matter, so it's, it's private, but um, it's uh, the motion was made by Trustee Alvarado, seconded by Trustee Calderon. The roll call vote was in favor, Trustees Alvarado, Calderon, and Romero. Voting no was Trustee Castillo. Uh, there was another motion by uh, Trustee Castillo, seconded by Trustee Calderon, to rescind the offer of the superintendency to Victor Hopper. There was a roll call vote. Uh, it was 4-0. Voting to uh, approve the rescinding of the offer uh, was um, were uh, Trustees Alvarado, Calderon, uh, Castillo, and Romero. Thank you. G, comments from the public? None. Moving on to H, presentations, IVROP. Good evening, everybody. My name is Edwin Obergfell, and I'm the IVROP superintendent. Um, the purpose of the presentation is to share information and highlights of activities during the 2017 and 18 period at Calexico and to thank you for the opportunity that we have served and worked with you during the 17-18 period and to respectfully request the approval of the 2018-2019 memorandum of agreement based on our accomplishments and opportunities for the district and for ourselves. The presenters are going to be focusing that are going to be focusing on the services that have been offered 
will be Mr. Juan Campos and Ms. Jennifer Sutter. They will present to the board information regarding the services and the experience that have been um, received here by the uh, Calexico teachers, administrators, in the attempt to implement the memorandum of agreement, the existing one. But before they present, I would like to respectfully remind the Calexico board that IVRP has provided relevant and needed services under the current MOA at six other local districts, including Brawley High, Calipatria Unified, Central Union High, Hopeville High, Imperial Unified, and San Pascual, along with ICO, I, ICOE for the 27-18 period. That's the same MOA that we have with Calexico, with the difference being that we have a three-year with them in, as opposed to the one year here in Calexico. We are even successfully serving a new partnership with Brawley Elementary under their safe neighborhoods and successful success programs, learning communities, Prop 47. I'm also pleased to inform you that we will continue to work with the Mount Empire in a, in a Perkins consortium. Um, IVROP is a small but effective $6 million annual budget. We have programs and projects that serve school youth, out of school youth, youth ex offenders, foster care, and, re and uh, adults is serving and doing employability, work experience, transitional housing, and we work with hundreds of businesses on, a, on an annual basis. All of our programs serve the community, the Calexico community. These are services to out of school youth, ex offender youth, foster care participants, and adults. Repeating, many of our students' participants are from the Calexico community. Your community members are being served not through MOA dollars, but all through other funding sources that IVROP secures uh, through workforce innovation, for example, dollars and through other local county grants as well. Um, the remaining 80% is is comes of our budget comes from those federal, state, and county projects that I just mentioned. Um, these are projects are successful, direct, and, ind and provide direct and indirect support for students in education and successful direct and indirect intervention as well as prevention. We are proud of our program and we are proud of the work we've done here in Calexico. This does not mean that we were perfect nor that our services were perfectly executed in Calexico or, that, or in the Calexico School District. We realize that we've had some missteps and we are looking forward to improve our services in partnership with the districts. Um, in response to a comment that was made on the June 14th regarding uh, uh, the services to the teachers and who we served, I would just like to remind the board, respectfully remind the board, that IVROP offers CT regional advisory meetings. We do teacher professional development opportunities. We have events such as the Ag Summit, the annual showcase, in which you see 500 to 700 people, including parents, students, teachers, business people, communal leaders, all who highly support are and are very engaged in the project and the work and the projects that we do. If you attend our annual IVRP Community Found Foundation Gala, you will hear community leaders, prominent members of the pr uh, praise, and make positive comments about the great work that IVRP does on a consistent basis, daily in daily. If you talk to the other MOA CTE site administrators, they will tell you also tell you about the great work that is being done by Juan Campos, Jennifer, our other career specialists across the valley. Again, if you talk to the community leaders, and, and they, you will hear positive and supportive comments about the work IVROP does. Last week, for example, Judge Juan Ulloa was praising IVROP because of the work that, we, that is being done with ex-youth offenders. I would respectfully re suggest that um, these are important, very important and relevant activities and events that community leaders are saying that we are praising the work that we are doing. However, the success of the MOA of the IVROP MOA at Calexico has come with some, some challenges. It is a well-known fact that some of the Calexico teachers and administrators did not support the IVROP nor the Calexico MOA. It has been witnessed in this boardroom and in some classrooms and in other meeting rooms. Frankly, this, is, this, this has been a, a challenge for us because the lack of support has been we've met some resistance. But nonetheless, I believe, it's my opinion, that IVROP has been successful, and that's the work and some of the discussion that, that Jennifer and that Mr. Juan Campos will share with you. So thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak, but they're the ones that are going to tell you about the services. Thanks. Good evening. Uh, my name is Juan Campos. I'm the CTE and Educational Services Coordinator for Imperial Valley ROP. Uh, so a little bit about what you get when you you know, from the MOA uh, staffing wise, uh, one of the things that's not all that known is that we actually have 
uh, managers that are working uh, in front of the scenes and behind the scenes for Calexico. Uh, I, for one, uh, calculated that I probably spend about 46 hours a month just working on items related, uh, relevant to Calexico. Uh, and uh, Miss Jennifer Sutter, she's a, a new program manager. Uh, she started in April. Uh, previous to that, she worked uh, under the Career Pathway Trust grant, and she estimated about 33 hours of just per month working on items related to uh, specific pathways in law and health. Um, and since April, she's uh, been working as a program manager for um, Ed Services, and she continues to work around, uh, I would say, about that amount of time, about 33 hours a month on items related to um, Calexico High School. We have uh, two career specialists that work. Wh one is a full-time position uh, at the school site at the uh, College Center. Uh, they work uh, 40 hours a week, Monday through Friday. And then we have a part-time career specialist uh, who also is on campus, but only uh, 24 hours, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And, and these folks work uh, directly with students and then also with the teachers. And, and like I mentioned, uh, the Career Pathway Trust, we also have another career specialist uh, that has taken over those duties. And this is a full-time person, and they work with uh, law and health pathways throughout the valley. But you know, as uh, Calexico has law, law and health pathways as well, that, that person is also working with these teachers to support those programs in Calexico. Um, so some of the services that have been accessed over the course of this past year as uh, principal updates, uh, we meet uh, when available with the principal uh, to discuss some of the ongoing services that are happening at the high school. We also, um, uh, like I mentioned, our career specialists, they provide direct student support. Uh, so a, a number here, it's uh, 5,224 student service contacts that were made this past year. So what that means, it, it's a duplicated count, but the, this is the, the times that our staff work directly with students. Um, so you know, the breakdown is the, uh, below that, the career assessment and exploration. This is like career assessment and any type of work that our career specialists do directly with students. We've had about uh, 1, 000, over 1,000 uh, service-related contacts made in that. Uh, area CTE awareness almost 2,000 as you can see right there almost uh, 2,000 direct student service contacts made on CTE awareness related services uh, in terms of employability resume development application and interviews uh, over 1,600 uh, service contacts there uh, we uh, at IVROP we provide the national career readiness certificate this is a nationally recognized uh, employment type um, certificate that students can demonstrate their work readiness and we work with 36 students uh, at the high school uh, we uh, support teachers with CTSO CTSO uh, career technical student organizations and and skill related support uh, we're, that's uh, over a hundred students that we work with there uh, work-based learning opportunities this is a, a wide definition of um, work-based learning includes uh, classroom uh, presentations, uh, working with in internships and things of that nature, 144 students. And then uh, a couple of items that were available to teachers throughout the year include a CTE IG. This is a, the CTE incentive uh, grant workshop. We had four attendees from uh, the high school and then also our A3G workshop. We had five attendees there. Uh, just a, a special note about the uh, CTIG workshops. Uh, all grantees throughout the state are required to attend uh, technical assistance support. So we um, have brought that service to the Valley so that uh, grantees here in the Valley can meet that requirement. And then the other uh, item that uh, where we had a couple of teachers involved in was our, our annual showcase. We had uh, a couple of teachers uh, actually have um, a booth there, and then another, the welding instructor, he, he um, made this um, nice sculpture that was on display uh, to display student work at the, the showcase. 
Uh, I'm going to let Jen talk about the highlighted services. These are things that um, happen that are uh, much more specialized and things that she kind of took the lead on as she was transitioning from her role as the, a career specialist into a program manager. Good evening. Uh, as previ previously mentioned, my name is Jennifer Sutter. I'm the program manager for educational services. Um, I'm going to briefly talk about some of the services that were uh, provided here. Um, first being the Ag Summit on March 15th. I feel really blessed to be a part of all of these events, first of all, uh, really because it's all about the student services and opportunities for the students, including the students here at, at Clexco, uh, in the Clexco district. And uh, fortunately, we had a, a great amount of uh, participation throughout all of these things. Um, so first of all, the Ag Summit, there were three industry tours that happened that day. Uh, the students were able to uh, do a tour of the cheese factory, a Metza Kuhn Compress, and uh, also Bullfrog Dairy. Um, at the same event, we had six industry speakers that were there um, to provide any kind of questions or support for the students. Um, that included the Imperial Valley Farm Bureau, Ag Expo, Aza Sheep Company, Aza Custom Harvesting Company, Desert Eye Photography, and Emetza Exporting. Um, six districts, including Calexico, participated in this event with over 500 students and industry representatives. Um, we were also very proud to include the University of California Cooperative Extension Hopeville office, as well as the University of Arizona, who were there to speak on behalf of post-secondary education to students who were looking to further education in the agricultural field. Um, the next one is the law enforcement competition on March 28th. Uh, we had a really great turnout for this event. Um, all three law enforcement um, programs here in the Valley were able to participate with over 50 students competing and then uh, also 100 students, over 100 students being involved in the activities throughout the day. Uh, we had 15 law enforcement agencies that were involved in this competition. Um, involved in the scoring and the skills demonstration, including the Calexico Police Department, the U.S. Coast Guard, Border Patrol, California State Parks, Probation Department, Department of Corrections, including both Calipatria and Sentinel State Prisons, just to name a few. Uh, the next is the IVROP showcase, which Juan went over, so I'll, I'll go ahead and skip that one. Um, and then the next one is the Regional Law Advisory Committee meeting. Um, this is something that we added this year. Uh, all three law enforcement programs in Imperial Valley participated with this as well. Um, they were able, had the opportunity to present to 53 law enforcement officers and law enforcement agency representatives. Um, this was something that IVROP presented um, or facilitated and currently has two scheduled for the coming year, one for the fall and one for the spring. This helps CTE programs in their reporting and accountability measures by having direct industry input into their programs. Um, the work completed through the CCPT grant, uh, California Career Pathways, Juan spoke a little bit about it, but um, through this grant we were able to provide services such as classroom materials, um, transportation, chaperoning several different field trips um, throughout the year, specifically field trips that, that had to do with the law and health programs. Um, the next one is the SDSU IVROP Health Coaching Program. Currently, we have uh, six districts and over 180 students participating in this program. It's through the collaboration of IVROP and uh, San Diego State University RN uh, health, er, health students that um, are currently meeting with students in these six districts on a regular basis. Uh, what does that mean for the Calexico High School students? Uh, in the fall of this year, the students who participated in this program walked away with a professional health portfolio. And then the students who participated this spring, they were able to showcase their work at the SDSU Health Research Day on May 5th. Um, lastly, uh, the Aurora High School uh, Career Survey. Um, we had two days where seven IVROP staff tested over 153 students for a career assessment. Currently, the assessment is being used to assist in potential development of new CTE pathways at Aurora. And then lastly, the UCCI A through G submission. Um, this was offered originally to all of the CT uh, teachers at Calexico High School. Uh, we provided A through G technical assistance on May 8th and May 11th. 
during this time, one teacher participated. Um, only four teachers accessed the service in total. For those four teachers, IVROP submitted six courses for approval, and I'm very pleased to announce that as of June 26, all six courses have been approved. I want to highlight some of the services that are available to other districts which they've a accessed. So we do support uh, CTE department collaborative meetings. This is where we work hand in hand with the teachers and, and leaders of, of CTE at the different districts. And we even uh, help facilitate some of the future planning and support professional development that's um, aligned to what the teachers are doing. We also um, support CTE. We facilitate and we actually host CTE advisory meetings. Uh, this is where industry folks come in and they help um, influence teachers. They provide information about what's happening in the industry. So this is v very relevant to help support the instruction in the classroom. We also uh, have held now two um, CTE regional advisory meetings. These are um, very large uh, industry related meetings where all pathways are, are basically covered and we bring industry folks in. Um, they've been highly successful and it's just another opportunity for the uh, CTE teachers to, to get even more information from the industry and then not only that but connect with, with folks for potential internships and so it's, it's a great opportunity for, for all involved. Uh, we've supported districts with grant writing, um, actually facilitating meetings and prepping for uh, grants and also writing portions of grants and even writing full proposals that have been successful. Uh, uh, an example is the CTE facilities grant and also the Prop 47 grant and we actually helped uh, three districts receive that Prop 47 funding uh, and w we uh, authored and wrote those proposals. Uh, we offer the district's Perkins accountability support. Uh, so what this means is, you know, making sure that the teachers and the schools are um, m making sure that they're accountable on all areas related to the Perkins funding. Uh, we have a specialized um, mentor program. It's called St CTE Student Ambassadors. It's uh, offered at several campuses, and this is a, another leadership type opportunity available for students. Um, and then we offer developmental assets. This is a also another leadership building. There's 40 developmental assets that uh, all students need to be successful adults. And so there we provide workshops and assistance in, in classrooms, even beyond CTE, uh, where uh, our staff work directly with these students to build on a lot of uh, resiliency and other character traits. Um, and then we also offer a slew of other types of mentoring programs at the different campuses. Uh, just, you know, for your information, thank you for zooming in. Uh, th this is the breakdown uh, for 1718, the IVROP funding and, and what the districts pay in for our, our services. It's based on uh, student enrollment, ADA. And if you look at the uh, far right column, uh, where it says, uh, uh, yeah, 25%, that's 25% of the grade span adjustment. And if and you could just see, uh, just get a, a good look of ev uh, what everybody pays for in, in terms of that. And uh, there seems to be an error there. Hopeville is listed twice. They don't pay twice for the services. It was just an error on my part. Um, and you can see that Central Union High School is the uh, pays the most uh, based on their enrollment. And uh, some of the services that are emerging and things that we're looking for in, into the future. Um, the MOA, I'm really proud to say that uh, there was a lot of work in uh, creating more accountability and performance measures for IVROP. So we're really happy um, to see that and, and welcome the opportunity to um, showcase how, how we can support the district. There's a uh, intent to increase our focus on work-based learning in the future where we will provide more opportunities for students to um, work uh, on sites and do student internship type work, shadowing in-class uh, presentations, and also include some performance measures within there. Uh, we're going to focus on uh, student credentialing. We've got to look to find where the all those opportunities exist, but um, wh what that means is the actual uh, certificates and credentialing, th credentialing that's tied to an industry. And uh, we look forward to continuing to work with Aurora High School, like was mentioned previously, and trying to develop a CTE pathway or programs on that campus. 
And then uh, one of the newest, I'm going to say in the last several months, we um, hit off a really good uh, partnership with University of Arizona. And really the next steps there is to really start looking at some of the courses that Calexico has to offer and look against um, what un the University of Arizona has to offer and see how they match up and start uh, creating some um, articulation and dual enrollment agreements there. Uh, for the future, we want uh, we have two grants that are submitted, one to the uh, county and then t to another specialized grant funding that was available as a result of a um, project that Clinicas de Salud de Pueblo has ongoing that we were invited to uh, apply for uh, specific funding. So th these two grants, we're going to create mobile career exploration and this uh, what this will be is uh, pathway specific. Um, type exploration for uh, the lower grades and we're going to offer it to all of the um, high need schools throughout the Imperial Valley. So hopefully we get the, that grant and we can offer that service here uh, throughout this district as well. Uh, we hope to in the future provide access to more integrated and NGSS aligned A through G uh, CT courses, training, uh, maybe even developing some um, curriculum, not excuse me, not curriculum, but courses that are ready to go. And teachers can look through these lists and decides, decide whether they would like to add that to their uh, coursework. And then finally, uh, developmental assets work. Uh, like I mentioned before, this is work that we can do beyond uh, CTE and, and work with students uh, that just have this uh, need for resiliency and character development. And that's the end of my presentation. Thank you. I do. So, um, where are you guys located at? Where are we located at? Yes. Uh, we're at in the um, library, mm -hmm. and we're in the past. That was where all the college uh, folks, like the you know the different college going programs, and so th we're tucked away in a little corner right next to to Mr. Vela's office. I don't know if that make uh, if that yeah. kind of yeah I know. okay yeah yeah okay. Okay. Um, how do you guys communicate with the teacher with the teachers and the staff about your about your scheduling? How do they know when to go and see you or the people that that you have there? How do how do they know that you're there? We have a um, schedule at all the districts, including Calexico, and this place in conspicuous places and then throughout the year we uh, follow up with the teachers we we go to their classroom we try to see if we can work with them so there's uh, ongoing progress but like i said there's a schedule that's that's available on campus now these numbers that you have here that you have here uh, for us you uh, five thousand 224 student service contacts. All, all these numbers, are these just Calexico High School or, or Valley-wide? That is Calexico only. Okay, and you did, but you did mention uh, that some of the, these numbers were duplicated. What did you mean by that? Uh, right, uh, the, it's service contacts. Mm -hmm. So that's, um, it's not um, students. That's not the number of students. Clearly it's not the number of students. So when I say duplicate, it could be uh, us going into a classroom, working with a group of students in, in one setting, and then maybe working with another group in another setting, based on all of the, the uh, s if you go back and look at that slide, there's like CT awareness, career assessment. So we could wind up working with uh, the same, maybe even group of students a couple of times. Well, when you, what you mean when you say duplicate, that's not, that's not being duplicate, because if I see a student twice in a day, I'm not duplicating that because I saw the students twice on, on, on different times. So that's not duplicating. That's, that's actually just making personal contact with the student. So, Right. We were just trying to make sense of, of how do we explain that information. So um, rather than say, you know, the number of students, it's just the, the service, con the contact that we make with that student. So those are the number of contacts that we've made with that student. So all these numbers? All these numbers that you have here, are these valley-wide or Calexico? That's Calexico only. Only Calexico. Mm -hmm. um, you said that you have done 
that you have uh, with grant writing, Ms. Montaño? You said you also said th thank you, Ms. Montaño. Sorry. Uh, you also said natural careiness. Uh, you mentioned natural careiness. Um, however, is that a, was that available to Calexico uh, High School students? Yes. Because yep. I have a note here from from somebody at the high school that it was not. Actually, it says that they don't even know what what that means. Um, did you help with the Perkins grant? Uh, to answer your question, it's always available uh, to students. Uh, we, we promote that well throughout uh, the year. So it's, you know, we offer it to teachers. It's, it's up to them to take advantage or not. Um, also, the ambassadors, the, uh, I'm being told that Calexico High School doesn't know what ambassadors are. How did you, did you work with, did you have ambassadors at Calexico High School? Did you work with them? <coughs> we, uh, Mr. Calderon, with all due respect, we offer all of these services like we do to all the other districts and all the teachers, and it's up to them to take advantage or not. Okay. So we put that up to them, and they either access it or they well, don't. You mentioned, you, you're mentioning, and with all due respect, you're mentioning that all these services, you're giving numbers mm -hmm. to us, but now you cannot tell me if, if, if Calexico students participated. See, that's my problem. Okay. Well, let, let me finish. Okay. And that is my problem. I know you. I know you work hard. You work hard. Mm -hmm. However, and this is not against you. Mm -hmm. My problem is that all this, I mean, I don't see any proof. I've talked to people. I talked to people at the high school. And I'm getting two different stories. I'm getting one story from you, and I'm getting another story from them. So... I know when I wasn't when I was in Calexico High School back in the day. Yes, I graduated in 1990. So, okay. Um, I know back in the day, the uh, ROP counselor went and grabbed me for my class to put me in another class because that's what I wanted. So yes, I know ROP works or used to work because I experienced it firsthand. However. The story that I'm getting here today, uh, that I'm getting from other people, from uh, from teachers, administrators at the high school, it's a different story, and that bothers me. That mm -hmm. that really that really bothers me. Mr. Carter, it, it well noted, but a couple of things that I would like to clear: when we're talking about those duplicated services, if a, if a if a student receives two or three different services, it is the same student, but it, it's very legible. It is very it is uh, it is okay to count that as three distinct services. So you may not recognize that, oh, no. but if we're providing, if we're providing, talking to them about NCRC, if we're talking to them about something else, it is three distinct services. Yep. And with all due respect, we also during the Prop 47 grant, actually one of the one of the first schools districts that we contacted to offer those was actually Calexico, but we never received a response. So we went to Brawley Elementary, and they were the ones that were able to take advantage of it. So we have tried. Um, again, there's been, whether there's been miscommunication on our part or some, uh, perhaps even some deliberate resistance or some perhaps accidental, but there's been, there's been, a, we've, we've been, not been successful in working with everybody here. I would, you know, we're, we're here accountable, Mr. Calderon. We're here holding up. I would like to know who those teachers are that are saying that we're not there. No, they've been here. But they've, who, they've are, been, are you talking been, about Ms. Galindo? They've been here, you know, I don't know. All Ms. The Galindo things. will not talk to us at all. We've tried, and we've tried numerous times. We've tried to meet with her, and she will not meet with us. Who else would you like to talk about? I, I'm not here. I'm, well, we're, we're here holding up, and so. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation. I mean, we're not here to single out anybody. Um, we'll go ahead and we're going to take action on it later on. Um, so with that said, we're going to move on to uh, the consent agenda. All items appearing will be acted upon by one motion without discussion unless any item is pulled for separate consideration and action. I move we approve. Uh, second. second. Motion by Romero, second by myself, Alvarado. All those in favor, please state aye. 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 All those in favor, is Romero, Calderon, Castillo, and myself. Moving on to J information items, J1 superintendent report. All right, good evening, trustees. Uh, first of all, just like to wish and give a shout out Best of luck to our CTE culinary students. Uh, they are 
actually in Atlanta, Georgia, as we speak. And so they're competing at the national level. Uh, as you recall, they won the state level. And so now they're repre representing us very proudly in Atlanta, at Atlanta, Georgia. So that's, uh, that's awesome. And so we wish them the best of luck as they're over there competing. Um, just another update uh, in regards to the Highway 98 and the C in Perry. I know that it was a topic of discussion at our last board meeting. Uh, we had a meeting yesterday at the County Board of Supervisors, uh, and we were there to discuss different options in regards to Highway 98 at C and Perry. What is it that we could do in regards to more student safety in that crosswalk? Uh, so we had a Mr. John Rennison that is, was there, a board supervisor for District 1. We had a trustee, Mr. Lorenzo Calderon, was present. Uh, we, have, we had Chief Gerardo from the Calexico Police Department. We had Lieutenant Serrano from the Calexico Police Department. We had uh, Mark Baza. He's the Executive Director for the Imperial County Transportation Commission. Uh, we had John Gay, uh, Director of Public Works. And we had Marcelo Peinado. Uh, he is the Deputy District Director for Traffic Operations for Caltrans. And so it was a very productive meeting. Um, we talked a lot about student safety, talked a lot about the needs of the district, specifically in that location. And the good thing is that we're gonna see some positive changes coming in the next three months. So the first change, ooh, is the camera on real quick? All right, so the first change that's gonna happen in the first three months is uh, Caltrans is gonna install what are called speed feedback signs. You've probably seen those, and we're gonna put the, the picture up right now. It's the ones that as you approach that particular intersection, they will tell you how fast you're moving or going. So as you um, approach that intersection of Highway 98 and CM Perry, uh, they're gonna put two of these, one on each side. So that way as cars are approaching that particular intersection, they'll be notified that obviously it's a school crossing and they'll be notified of how fast uh, they're traveling because one of the concerns that Caltrans has picked up is, you know, cars pretty much speed through that area. So I think this is definitely going to be, you know, something great to start off with. Um, the second one, I know we had uh, talked about um, uh, like a beacon, a flashing beacon, kind of similar to what uh, El Centro has on Imperial Avenue and over by Southwest High School. So the good news is that uh, Caltrans, uh, we'll be installing a rapid flashing beacon. Yeah, let me... um, the only thing with this one is that uh, it is about a year and a half away. So what's happening is that there is going to be some construction work on Highway 98 close to the CN Perry intersection. So what Caltrans is going to do is they're going to include the beacons as part of that project. So the great news is that we're gonna have two uh, different uh, safety items put in there. One is the uh, speed feedback sign. Caltrans is going to work on having it installed by the first day of school. Uh, and then the second one is that they will be installing the rapid flashing beacon, which is this one here. You've probably seen it off of Imperial Avenue uh, in El Centro or at Southwest High School. So the way this works is you press a button and when you press the button, it starts flashing. So it alerts drivers that are you know, traveling that there's somebody that's going to be walking through. Um, the cost to the district in this case will be zero uh, because Caltrans is basically picking up the cost of these two uh, different projects. The only difference is when it comes to the rapid flashing beacon, uh, we are some time away from that but the good news is that it's in the works. And so I want to thank, uh, you know, Mr. John Renison, Mr. Calderon, uh, the rest of the members that were there because it was a very productive meeting and I think we walked out of there with the intent of walking away with uh, some safety feature at that particular intersection that would provide the safety that we're looking uh, for our students and I think we walked away with that. So just want to report that to the board. Um, the other one is a pool update. Uh, we're very excited about bringing an agreement uh, to the board, which uh, Ms. 
uh, Rodriguez will talk a little bit more about as an item that is coming up. Uh, but if everything you know is approved, then we're looking at the community having access to the pool starting July 2nd. Uh, then also on the modernization of Calexico High School, you've probably seen it already, but if you haven't, uh, the parking lot is underway, which is the first phase. So we're very glad to see that there's already, already construction taking place for the um, new, you know, remodelization of, uh, of the parking lot. And then just lastly, just as a reminder to the board, we do have a board staff evaluation scheduled for next Friday, July the 6th from 9 to 3 p.m. here in the boardroom. Thank you. Thank you. J2 Association comments? ACT. Good. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The school year has ended. Well, a couple of weeks ago it ended. And overall, it was a productive year full of change that has ultimately ended with good relations between your educators and your administration. At the very end of the year, on the last day of the work year, in fact, we experienced another example of how we can work together toward a common goal. On this day, ACT met with the district to work together toward resolving an unforeseen problem in our school calendar. Due to a conflict between CUSD and IBC's calendars, our incoming seniors risk being unable to attend IBC summer school in 2019. Once a calendar is signed and agreed upon, as ours is, it's highly unusual and irregular to make any change. People plan around the dates they are guaranteed by the district. They count on the stability of those dates and because of this, any adjustment can become a problem. Fortunately, both the district and ACT came together with a willingness to solve the problem and we have. Today you will be presented with a solution to the problem that will satisfy the needs of both students and educators. I'm once again pleased to have been a part of a meeting between our two entities that has resulted in a positive outcome. This is a trend that has been ongoing and I hope it continues. And that concludes my report. CSEA. Good evening, board members. Sonia Redona, CSEA president. I'm just here to inform her that July 5th, we have our next, our next negotiation session. Hopefully we can sign off and get it started. Also, I wanna remind you that July 30 and 31st, we have that PERP hearing in Glendale regarding the unfair labor practice we have against the district. Thank you. Thank you. J3 ROP committee. I think nothing, well, we had a pretty complete presentation of the services from ROP. Just on the one little comment I'll make is uh, one of the slides was the A through G, and glad to hear that Colexco has six A through G courses, ET courses, which is tied into our um, LCAP plan. So one of our goals that we approved was uh, offering more CT A through G approved pathways. So this, in partnership with ROP, has been a nice addition. I think the courses were what, agricultural, legal justice system, fashion, textile, manufacturing, auto shop, or auto things. So nice A through G for our students and their pathways. So thank you. Thank you. J4 board reports, Mr. Romero. Thank you, Mr. Calderon. Good evening and happy summer to everybody. So I hope everybody has, uh, has started enjoying the summer for the summer days. Um, I I went to a couple, well, actually, I went to uh, the summer school uh, sites. I went to the high school. I went to Duo, where they're having the migrant program. Very pleased to see, anybody migrant here? No, no, And uh, very pleased to see what they were doing in the migrant program. I went to, and I also went to uh, Cesar Chavez. Very pleased to see what they, what they were doing over there. Uh, uh, I went to the high school uh, as well. Also, um, on my trip to Duel, uh, I discussed with the site principal regarding uh, maybe, maybe implementing, and that's something that I would like to talk to the board, a pilot program about the cameras outside you know, uh, uh, for, for safety. 
so there was a good discussion, but uh, I would like for, I would like to ask for to talk about that just for safety for safety reasons. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Castillo. None for me. Thank you. And myself, I just want to thank everybody for showing up here tonight. Thank you, ROP, for that presentation you gave out, and also for the Collective Education Foundation many grants that were presented today for uh, robotics, and also for a Circle of Friends. Um, I think they're well deserved. And with that said, let's move on to K action items. K1, approval of local control and accountability plan LCAP for school year 2018 2019. Is there anything, any additions this year? No. no. So I'll say this was presented last time, right, for public hearing. Right. It's coming back to us for approval. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll sec second by Mr. Calderon. All those in favor, please state aye. Aye. All those in favor is Romero, Calderon, Castillo, and myself. Moving on to K2, approval for the 2017-18 estimated actuals and 2018-19 annual budget. This as well, last time was public hearing, correct? Yes, kind of? um, unless you don't want to hear the presentation. Anything else to add? Well, it would be beneficial That's to good. look at the presentation. Okay. But yes. <laughs> okay, dear board members and members of the public, um, this is a presentation of the estimated 1718 um, actuals and the 1819 um, proposed budget. So we will be talking about the state budget process, the key assumptions, um, also the numbers, what it will, what we're estimating it will end, um, the proposed for the 1819, and then the multi-year for the subsequent two years, and then next steps after we. We have done adopting the budget, then what is the next steps for the district? So I want to share with you what the state budget process looks like. Um, we all know that in January, the governor proposes a budget for the next year. February, um, there's uh, the legislative analyst will review and comment based on the proposal. And then by April, um, we have taxes come in. So by then, uh, the state recalculates the statutory COLA and sets the rates for the next year and the subsequent two years. Um, between April and May, then there's a revised um, budget based on April, April's um, income and whatever has come in. And then by June, we're s that's where we're at right now, um, then the state does his final adoption of the budget. And then after that, we have 45 days. In our case, after today, we will be submitting a revised budget um, because we just received the funding from the IID. So I will um, reflect that. We also um, did a revised P2. Um, there was 12 ADA in addition. So that, that really helped because of the Saturday schools. So when we drafted the budget, we didn't have those numbers. But I will be uh, submitting a 45-day revise to show the additional revenue because of that revised P2. And then in November, everything starts all over again. So just so that we know how this goes. Um, that's why when we make commitments today, sometimes we say, um, let's wait until January to see if it's something that we can still afford or because we will close our budget in September. By then is when, right now it's estimated actuals. In September, it would be unaudited actuals. So here are the revenue key assumptions. In an assumption is a what if. At this time, the budget is always a living document. It always changes. The only time that we know exactly where the budget will, will end or f is be fixed is when we do the unaudited actuals. That, that's really when we know, when we're closing the books, that's exactly when we know what the numbers are. During the year, it's always changing because the economy might be doing well, might be doing bad, and so we need to change the assumptions. In this case, what you're looking at is the governor has decided to fund 100% gap funding. He also decided to provide a 3% COLA on the target rates and a 2.71 for everything else. What you see here is exactly the funding that we're going to get. This is, this we're, we're at target. There's no more 
um, gaps in between. This is it. $101 million is what we're going to get for the 1819. And it's really easy to calculate. Um, the ADA, this is our ADA at P2. It will go up by 12 ADA um, at the revised budget. And so you calculate, this is the base rate, and then these are your other amounts. So for this, so the way you calculate it, um, an ROP mentioned that they, they get 25% of the CTE funding. So the way they calculate that is 233 times the ADA, and it's about 734,000. And according to their table, it was about 160 something, um, 734,000, it was 160 something for them. So that was the 25% that they were talking about. So any questions on this slide? No? Very straightforward. Okay, next slide is more revenue key assumptions. Um, again, 101 is our total uh, funding from the state. However, there is a s division in between this 101. There's the 85 that come from the state, and then there's the education protection account, which is only for teacher salaries. So out of the 101, 11.3 is for teacher salaries, and then the other two amounts is like a balancing game. Because if property taxes go up, the state apportionment goes down. So we will never get more than, the, than our target rate times the ADA. If property taxes, again, go up, then something else goes down, but it's a balancing game. So when people say, well, our houses are worth more or we're paying more into our taxes, it doesn't really um, affect, it, it impact us positively because it balances out with the state apportionment. They'll take it off, okay? Then out of this 101, um, 500, if you see on, well, on Formal 1 is 101, 539, 742. And what, what's that, um, what is that figure? Well, it's the, it's the 101, 500 plus 168 that we receive in redevelopment funds. And then we do a, a transfer to adult debt of 129,600. And that equals this amount. So I just wanted to make sure that people understand how is it that the revenue, um, sometimes we don't see the whole details in one figure. And so I really wanted to show this to everyone so they know how. And then on the unrestricted, we also get what's called mandated block grant. We receive 59.83 per ADA, so that's approximately $533,000. Again, these are all our revenue key assumptions for this coming year. Special education, we are receiving an increase of 2.71% COLA. That equals to only $45,000. The program itself to run special ed local is 7.8 million. The award from the state is about a million and some dollars. So truly, um, the, the program, we know it's not self-sustainable. So our contribution is about $6 million for the local special ed. Then on federal programs, there's no increases on revenues. All of your Title I, Title II, Title III, again, these are revenue key assumptions. These are not final awards. So there's no increase for federal revenue. So what do, what do we do? We just, whatever we got this year on 1718, we keep the same um, amounts for, this 18, for the 1819. Um, special Ed Federal, which is how, um, this is how we pay our instructional assistants um, that service the Special Ed Department. Uh, there is no race on that, um, on that program, but to operate the federal program, um, the Special Ed Federal part is 2.7 million. So our contribution is uh, around 1.6 then we are receiving one-time discretionary funds of $168 per ADA. So that's approximately a, a $1.5 million. And then we're getting lottery unrestricted. 
With lottery unrestricted, what we pay is we pay our, our teacher substitutes and our classified substitutes. So if anyone's out sick, that's how we pay from this lottery funds. And that is approximately, oops, that is approximately uh, $1.3 million. Then our lottery restricted, which is about 428,000, that's how we pay for textbooks. When textbooks are lost or we need to replenish, not textbook adoptions, these are just to uh, replace our current textbooks. Okay. Moving forward with more, um, now we're going into the expenditure assumptions. And so these, um, it, this is the Educator effectiveness, effectiveness Funding. This one ends um, tomorrow. Uh, I am collecting all of the data. We did spend all of the award. If we don't submit the report by tomorrow, then we need to return um, the whole award, which was about $640,000. But yes, we are going to report that. Um, college readiness grant ends on June 30th of next year. Uh, we are still have some carryover, and we will be um, allocating some expenditures for the next year. In the assumptions for expenditures, we are calculating 12 hours to go up by January 1st of 2019 for all of our temps and our crossing guards <coughs> and people who earn the minimum wage. 13 hours by January 1st of 2020. And then if you see this table on the corner, that is our current uh, full-time authorized staff. And so based on those numbers, that's how we calculated salaries and benefits for the, for the year that's ending, the next year that's coming, and the subsequent two years, okay? And this table is, um, well, I was able to pull it out so quickly because of our new system scape. They have a position control. More on expenditure assumptions. We have more expenditures than we do have revenue assumptions screen. So uh, STRS rates. This one's a very interesting one. Why? Because as you can see from 1718, the rate was from 14.43% employer contribution to 16.28 employer contribution you could think that maybe just 2% is going to increase in expenditures. Well, the truth is that it's going to increase 17%. Why? Because there is step in column, there is um, new, new salaries, um, and so all of that combined, um, it's going to increase from $6.3 million that we're going to estimating to spend at the end of this year to 7.4 for 1819. So the increase is about a million dollars more in STRS employer pay. On the CalPERS, the CalPERS is going up even more. Um, on second interim, the governor or CalPERS had stated that the 1819 rate would be 17.7. .7. Well, now they're saying no, it's going to be 18.062. Um, CalPERS has a situation right now where they have an investment portfolio and if those revenues don't come through, what they do is they just hike up the rate so that they can make up for that revenue because based on their actuarial, they need, they need to pay their, their retirees. And so CalPERS is very uncertain right now. And as you can see, the rate is going to go up exponentially um, moving forward. And so the difference for this one is about a 10% increase in cost. No questions? Okay, let's move forward. Here are some more expenditure assumptions. Um, this is the cost for 1819 on step and column for all groups. It's about a $1.2 million. And then I'm giving you the 1% cost for your certificated staff, your regular ACT and management, it will be about half a million dollars for 1%. And for classified is about, about $200,000. So just so you know that the ending fund balance would be decreased by this amount and this amount for every 1%. Okay? And the last expenditure assumptions, routine restricted maintenance. 
this is the this is the restricted resource that deals with keeping up our facilities in good repair. Um, when the times were bad, the the state allowed us to do a minimum two percent of total expenditures. So if our total expenditures is one hundred and twenty million dollars, two percent has to be for repairs. This um, will go away in 2021. We are required to do 3%. At this time, we only have budgeted two and a half million dollars, but we do have to think um, that we will have to reach the amount of three and a half million dollars by 2021. If with construction and if we go out to um, apply for state funding, then let's say we were to get state funding next year or the year after, then that 2% flexibility goes away and we need to allocate 3% because we are receiving funding from the state. They expect us to spend more on repairs as well. That's, that's like an indirect contribution. It's and then the, the table underneath, um, that's, that's the table that we're giving from, from school services. It's called the dashboard and also ICOE, that's the guidelines that they give us. And so we follow these guidelines in order to prepare our financials and they review them against these guidelines and they need to match because we can't over, um, overstate revenues or underestimate expenditures. Okay, so, um, can you zoom that, uh, Javier, please? And so this is, I don't, I, I did, I apologize. I did not um, put here the second interim amounts, but I will describe what happened. Um, overall, we are, on, on second interim, we said we were gonna be deficit spending by $6.3 million, uh, by $8.3 million. Um, at the end of, of this year is going to be six point, um, Six point seven. It's two million dollars less. I can't see the the number because it's it's hidden there. Let me pull it up here. It's six million six twenty eight. Okay, and why? What happened? Well, on the certificated salaries and classified salaries, there was a lot of L cap activities that did not materialize. Mm, there was MOUs that were not, you know, agreed on, and so those activities did not happen. Also, one of the things that did not happen that we had budgeted for in second interim was possible settling of negotiations with classified. So that did not happen, and so that's why I had to adjust the budget to reflect a more accurate amount of what we think we're going to end up with. Um, the the, the uh, benefits also aligned with the, with the salaries have to decrease. And then um, there was some increases in the, um, in the books and supplies, I'm sorry, in the uh, services and operating um, expenditures. Also, there's, there's decrease in expenditures because of the carryover. Again, some of the restricted resources did not finish their award. So what happens is that that extra award goes into the next year as a carryover. So the expenditures that were budgeted in this year have to be reduced so that they are rebudgeted in the next year as a carryover. Um, in, the, in, this, in the capital outlay, um, there was uh, no material changes. I did, um, if you see this yellow one, the $2.1 million on the other outer outgo, Sometimes we, we look at that description and we really don't know what's in there. We just know it's a number. But what it is, um, that one, it's really important to keep an eye on it because um, out of that 2.5 or two, $2.1 million, $800,000 is for interest and principal payments to financing agreements that, that the district has incurred. Right now we have two loans. We have one with Science Bank that still has four years to go. And then we just entered one with PNC Equipment with the uh, Climate Tech um, Agreement. And that one's for 15 years. So um, after four years, this um, 
the 800 will be reduced. And then also one and a half million dollars out of that 2.1 is the county transfer. Um, out of the LCAP, what happens with the county transfer is we, we receive the funding through LCFF, but then that $1.5 million goes as a pass-through to the county for special services. So that's what happened. And so that 2.1, that's what it is in there. So um, let's say in times of hardship, sorry, Mr. Calderon, <laughs> in times of hardship, it would be hard to reduce from here. You, you really can't reduce from this expenditure. And then also there's $125,000 that go into defer maintenance and that's your fund 14. My recommendation and you'll see it in the multi-year projections is that we do the transfer for 18, 19, but moving forward, we need to close the fund because we really need to pay attention. Um, fund 14 and routine maintenance are the same thing. And fund 14 got closed in 13, 14 when LCFF was established. But the state said you can leave it open and you can use it However, it just doesn't make sense to continue the fund if we need to pay more attention into routine maintenance. Okay? And so, um, so, that's fine. That's You can zoom it, Javier. Thank you. So these are items that are not included in, tem in, the, in the 18, in the multi-year projections. Okay, or in the 1819, not included. Okay, and that is 1718 and future negotiation agreements. Remember that 1% amount? Okay, once you see the ending fund balance, just have it in your mind that 1718 and future negotiation agreements are not part of the multi year projection. So for everything that we commit ourselves or, or agree to, you will see a reduction in the ending fund balance after we're settled. Textbook adoptions. The LCAP does not have any, um, I think it, it does have one minor book adoption, but not the comprehensive one. Um, Mrs. Colunga and Ms. Ramirez are not here, but I, I believe there's still uh, social science um, and some other ones that need to be addressed. And we're a big district, so we're talking about a million, a million and a half um, textbook adoptions and that needs to be considered another thing that we did not budget for is any fluctuations in the California's economy we've been on the longest recovery period so far so if there's if something was to happen if federal laws go crazier um, then uh, honestly obviously uh, the states would would um, feel the impact of that Pension costs, I just gave you the, the scenario of how increasingly pension costs are, are going up. Um, here's another one that we've had, we haven't really talked about, but I really wanted to bring it to your attention. Our special education uh, population is, is increasing. They need a lot of services, and we have something that's called the least restrictive environment principles towards inclusion. And we are in, um, just right now. Part of the part of the the budget does not include four new positions uh, to instructional assistants, um, and that is to address the needs on one to one for students that that need that assistance. And so that is something that is not part of the budget. And so when we're making more decisions that put pressure on the budget, I really wanted to give you a list of the things to consider. And obviously, that would be up to the to the board to set those priorities to see what is more important and what things need to be, um, you know, um, budgeted for. We don't have any any um, any contingency plan if there was ever a decline in enrollment. Um, so far, the capital projects that are on the on the multi-year projections is only strictly to L cap capital projects. There's no more than that. And then a, a comprehensive vehicle replacement um, budget is not there either. We only allocated $50,000 in the LCAP to replace some of the vehicles. Okay, so those are the things that are not in the budget. If you can zoom that in, please. Um, 
So overall, for next year, for 1819, we are going to close with a surplus. We are going to receive more revenues than we are going to have in expenditures, and, and that's good news because that $3.6 million helps us rebuild uh, fund balance, and it allows us to somehow um, have some savings for the future years. Um, what were the assumptions there uh, for the for the 1819? Obviously, step and column, um, all of the uh, stirs and purrs, uh, the 9.8 increase to health and welfare, and so that is the total for for the 1819. I don't know if you have any questions. Again, I point out the the outer go. It's a 2.2 million dollars, and. If you notice from the second interim, some of these amounts are less than what you will see on the second interim multi-year projections. Again, SCAPE, uh, position control, really made a difference in building this budget because it gave us accurate uh, amounts. Um, before, what we would do, it was we would go through spreadsheets and we would calculate a more or less ballpark of how much we thought we were gonna spend but with escape that that was minimized and so it gave us a more accurate uh, picture another thing that i did on this budget is that books and supplies have more more uh, budget and why did i do this because um, on the other budgets they had a lot of salaries and benefits on the discretionary funding and so i I put it on the books and services to ensure that we that we provide more more services and more supplies to our kids. And so it would be up to the site administrators and site um, department heads to reallocate that money if ever they needed to do it on salaries and benefits. Um, it is my suggestion and my recommendation that any salaries and benefits that are needed um, if it's not a, an established position, if it's, not, if, if it's not a contractual position, those salaries and benefits should be paid with categorical or some other kind of funding instead of the undis unrestricted discretionary. Um, th that is always the thought, to always spend down your restricted before you spend down the unrestricted. Because the unrestricted, you, you can build fund balance. And so that is just my recommendation. Uh, obviously, if, if the program allows it, because Ms. Montaño is right here. <laughs> All right. And so that's good news. We are ending with a surplus, and we are ending with a better um, reserve balance, as you'll see right now. Um, if you can zoom it and just scroll it down so that we can see the, the ending fund balance. So for um, eighteen nineteen. Um, let me see, because I can't see it. Yeah, for for eighteen nineteen, um, well, for seventeen eighteen, instead of ending with a five point five, we're gonna end up with a seven point five reserve balance. So we've went up two percent. And then for eighteen nineteen and second interim, we had said we were gonna end with a five point forty four. Well, thanks to Governor Brown saying a hundred percent gap funding and the additional one time and you know scape allowing us to budget more accurately um, we're ending with an 11.47 percent and that is really good um, I've been looking at other uh, multi-year projections from other districts and and yes they are down in the fours and the fives and so um, again um, I think this is good based on on the current budget process that we have and that is um, that is one of the items that I will talk about as far as next steps. So, if no questions on this slide, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Well, that w that's why I'm saying at the time when we drafted the budget, that was not there. And that will be part of the revised budget in in um, in the next 45 days. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Yes, if, if that's the direction of the board, yes, because we need to know how much you're willing to spend on it. We we did, um, well, we, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, the only budget that was um, put into the the LCAP was 50000 And the reason we didn't put more in there because we didn't have direction or I did not have any input um, from anyone in any department to say we need we need to put this in there. Yes, and so we did present it a, a you know a plan to replace the fleet. Um, it was not you know it was not favorable to the board. So yeah, and so far we the the department has not you know looked for other options, and so on too. Mm hmm and and that would be very expensive okay yes um so that's why i wanted to make sure that that was addressed that it was things that were not in the budget so as a board um we can get guidance and on surely enough we'll put it in there and um, he stepped out driving either pickup trucks full size or uh, full size vans so yes sir yes they do they're how many can I live with <laughs> well I, yeah um, we're, we're asking for 21 to make us as efficient as possible because as it stands right now we have two to three people per vehicle which from a resource leveling standpoint isn't effective when you're trying to address as many work orders as possible. Yes, sir. Both. So uh, some of the trades like uh, plumbing uh, would benefit from having a full-size van because they could be outfitted with the shelves. Okay, so Moving back. Yes. Okay. And I have another question. You mm -hmm. not, not for you, John. Okay. Thank uh -huh. you. Um, how many new book adoptions? We have eight million dollars allocated for books and supplies. Yes, but that's not just for textbooks. That is also for paper, crayons. Well, but my mm -hmm. question is, how many book adoptions do we have left? Um, that will be a question for Mrs. Colunga or Ms. Montaño if she can answer that. Yeah, and then there's books at the high school that are maybe 30 years old yeah. that need to be replaced. Yes. And that's another issue we need to address. Mm -hmm. So, and, 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 and see, these conversations are good conversations that lead me to the next um, slide. Um, um, we already talked, this is, these are the other funds. Um, this is the adult ed, child development and cafeteria. These are their ending fund balance. We keep monitoring them. Um, they're pretty, some of them are self-sufficient. However, adult did, we're, like I said, we are um, doing a transfer of 129,600. Um, but here's a slide that I wanted to, to talk about um, in talking about the true needs of the district. And, and if, if you see bullet point number five, we do need to have a discussion about how to rebuild fund balance and also about creating a committee, a budget process committee, where we meet every eight weeks, six to eight weeks, because one person, myself, I can't, I can't figure out what the departments need when I'm sitting down and drafting the budget. We need a comprehensive budget process where as things come up, we strategize and we think about it and how does it best um, fit throughout you know, the years. Um, we can't be doing, um, you know, symptomatic decisions because some, like right now, we know that our fleet is p falling apart and now we're just going to react to it instead of think about it and plan for it. That, that is not, 
that is not an effective way to run you know our operations we need to sit down and talk about them as collectively possible because one per you cannot give the power to just one person to make those decisions the, the the business person cannot be just the one deciding the fate of all the other departments they need to voice their opinion they are the ones who know up front you know what they need for their programs and, and so that, that is my recommendation, that we create a budget committee um, so that we're talking about these things. And so the next steps today is to adopt both the LCAP and the budget. I will be submitting a 45-day revise. Um, then an audit actuals are on September 15th, and then on December 15th, we'll be doing our 18-19 our um, first interim. So with that, I end with this little quote says, I alone cannot change the world, but I can cast a stone across the waters to create many ripples, and that's my little, my little granddaughter. <laughs> I do it for her, because she'll be coming to school here. Thank you. Maybe in five years. <laughs> and that I am, so if there's no more questions. Any, any other questions, board members? Or, oh, good. Good. So I'll make a motion okay, to approve. All right. Motion by myself, second by Castillo. All in favor, please state aye. 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 All in favor is Romero, Calderon, Castillo, and myself. Mr. President, can we take a two-minute break? Thank you. Two, 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 three, four, five. 8.27, we'll come back, reconvene at 8.32. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 
Anyway, so uh, So they're a goddess of that. Oh, the truth. The truth. I get that a lot of wealth. Okay. Oh, good. Ready? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> right. It's 8:32. We're going to reconvene. We're starting off with K3, agreement between Franklin Covey and Calexico Unified School District for Professional Development Training. The leader and me. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Motion by Calderon. Second by. I mean, motion by Castillo. Second by Calderon. All those in favor, please state aye. 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 All those in favor, Romero, Calderon, Castillo, and myself. Moving on to K4. Agreement between Renaissance Learning and Calexico Unified School District for software subscription for the 2018-19 school year. Move to approve. Second. Um, motion by Calderon, second by myself. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those in favor, Romero, Calderon, Castillo, and myself. Moving on to K-5. Agreement between Orange County Office of Education and Calexico Unified School District for school-based Medi-Cal administrative activities. Participant. Make a motion to approve with a question. Second with discussion. Quickly, so ma activities, right? Reimbursement. Do we just question? Do we know how f far back have they reimbursed the district? How far behind are they in reimbursements? Yeah. Thank you. Three years, Office four years. Um, I know we just paid for fifteen, sixteen. We build. Uh, yeah. But reimbursed though. Huh? When did they send us a check? Uh, so they're behind three years. Oh, three, four, five. Okay. I know when we had the consultant, we were getting them sooner. Yeah. But since then, they stopped. Okay, that's my question. Okay, so motion by Castillo, second by Calderon. All those in favor, please, did I? Aye. 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 All those in favor, Romero, Calderon, Castillo, and myself. Moving on to K6, agreement between, between Medic First and Collective Unified School District to conduct CPR first aid AD training for staff members between July 1st, 2018, and June 30th, 2019. I move to approve with comments or second. I'll, I'll second uh, discussion. Is it for anybody that wants to have the training or are we going to have a certain number of mandated people? No. So we open it district wide. So whoever is interested, classified or certificated staff, it's on a voluntary basis. We do have some staff that are required to have CPR. So we do mandate that they, that they do have it, but it's open to the whole district for any classified or certificated employee. So anybody that wants to have the training can have it again? Correct. Mm -hmm. And the training, do they go to his office or they come here? They come here to the district. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
This was a motion by Calderon, second by myself. All those in favor, please state aye. 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 All those in favor, is Romero, Calderon, Castillo, and myself. Moving on to case, case seven, agreement between Calexico Unified School District and Fresno County for cyber high courses for 2018-19 school year. Second. A motion by Calderon, second by Castillo. All those in favor, please state aye. 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 All those in favor, is Romero, Calderon, Castillo, and myself. Moving on to K-8, approval of revised school calendar for 2018-19 school year. Correct. We just did, yeah. So we got a motion by Calderon, second by Romero. Yes. All in favor, please state aye. 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 I was in favor of Romero, Calderon, Castillo, and myself. Moving on to K-9. Service agreement between the Calexico Unified School District and George Kuros for professional development services on powerful learning opportunities for our learners. I move it through. I'll, sec I'll second. Okay. Motion by Romero, second by Castillo. I was in favor, please state aye. 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 I was in favor of Romero, Calderon, Castillo, and myself. Moving on to K-10. It's a memorandum of understanding between Calexico Unified School District and the City of Calexico and for the 2018 Summer Pool Recreation Program. I move it approved. I'll second. second. I'll open it to discussion. I'll second it. Okay. Uh, just a quick question, Carlos. Um, some members of the uh, community have asked me if eventually maybe if we can trade a couple of days from the week open the pool on, on the weekend, on, on, one, on just one weekend. I know it's gonna be only four weeks, but I don't know if that will be possible. And I'm just relaying a message. I'm just relaying a message. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to take a look at that. One of the okay. things that we're taking into consideration is the maintenance yes. of the pool. And because of what happened last year, yes. we're, we're being very cautious as far as how we're moving, because we don't wanna be in any predicament where we could um, potentially have the algae and the buildup that we had, you know, that last summer. Yeah, so, yeah, but somebody has, a couple of people asked me if we could trade a couple of days for the weekend, so not to be used the whole week, but, okay, so maybe that's a discussion that you guys can have and we can have here. Right, so was and that if you have anybody who's interested in that discussion as far as an agency they can come and talk to us and we can have that conversation okay, we can talk about it. Mm -hmm. so there's a motion by romero seconded by myself all those in favor please state aye aye all those in favor of romero calderon castillo and myself moving on to k-11 memorandum of understanding between calexico unified school district and ivrp for corporate technical educational supportive services i mean we approve with comment i'll second on that comment okay um i sense a lot of friction here between the teachers resisting to use their services. Okay, that's got to stop. You mentioned you mentioned that administrators not being supportive. Um, some side administrators. Yes. Okay. Can Carlos? Can you please act with deal with this? The program is only as good as as effective as the people that use it. If they don't want it, it's going to fail. So uh, it's gotta, we gotta make it work. Absolutely, and we can definitely look, look into it. I know that uh, there's been improvements. Uh, I know that things can definitely be better, and I think that's definitely reflective in the MOU. So we'll definitely work collaboratively with ROP to make sure that we reach those goals that we've set in the MOU. Yes, yeah, work on, on both sides. Correct. So there's a motion. We are, uh, we are on the, uh, on, on last year we had the same discussion because uh, teachers had the same concerns. And I said it, if you look at the video, I said it. And here we got one year later, same issues. But oh well. So there's a motion by Romero, second by myself. All those in favor, please state aye. 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 All those against? No. So all those in favor is Romero, Castillo, and myself. Again, voting no is Calderon. Uh, moving on to K-12, awarding of RFP number 2018-04 an agreement with Terminex for Integrated Pest Management Services. I move to approve. I'll second. Motion by Romero, second by myself. All those in favor, please state aye. 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 All those in favor is Romero, Calderon, Castillo, and myself. Moving on to K-13, awarding of bid for Classical High School and classroom modular buildings to Silver Creek Industries Incorporated as the most responsive and responsible uh, bidder. Any discussion or in, no other in input? 
any information to share? Yes, the whole, the whole bid package. Yeah. Only one bid. Okay. Only one bid? Okay, nothing else then? Nothing else to add, uh, Ms. Rodriguez? No. Um, if not, I mean, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. There's nothing else to add to that? Okay. Another update. Okay. I'll make a motion, motion to approve. I'll second. So, motion by Romero, second by Calderon. I was in favor, please state aye. 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 I was in favor, Romero, Calderon, Castillo, myself. Moving on to K 14, approval of the Agriculture Career Technical Education Incentive Grant for 2018 19 school year. I'll second. Motion by Calderon, second by myself. I was in favor, please state aye. Aye. I was in favor of Romero, Calderon, Castillo, myself. Moving on to K-15, approval of AP Art History course for the 2018-2019 school year. I'll make a motion to approve with a comment. Second. With comments. So my comment here, I'm pleased to see that we're adding more AP courses, and I don't think we have the curriculum team here, but that's okay. You can relay that back. So I'm pleased to see that we're adding the more AP uh, courses, again, for, you know, we always talk about our language learners, our or those are our interventions. Well, here's the opposite end, so that's great. Um, and I just hope to see uh, the continuing addition of uh, challenging courses for our students to help them become college and career ready. Right. So more AP courses. Were teachers, thank you, Mike, uh, were teachers involved in this process, selecting the... Uh, the, 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 the Absolutely. The and, you know, oh. I, you know, I know Mr. Taylor is very excited about uh, commenting on that, so I'll let him... Yeah, if you don't mind. I'm, I'm the teacher teaching it, so uh, I was deeply involved in the creation of the course. Uh, the, you know, the syllabus is attached. It's it's probably not like a lot of syllabuses that you might u be used to seeing because this one has to be approved by the AP, uh, well, by the col college board uh, for for it to be an AP class. So it's about a it's a book almost. Um, but yeah, so teachers were definitely involved in the, in the creation. Thank you. Just one more comment. I know they've got the AP conference. I think we're approved mission attending. Has our, does our district participate in that, or have they in the past? The AP conference? I'm, I don't know. They have in the past, yes. Yeah, okay. That's right. In Vegas, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. So there was a motion, once again, by, was it Castillo? Second by Calderon. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 I was in favor of Romero, Calderon, Castillo, myself. Moving on to uh, K-16, resolution for the education protection account for 2018-2019 school year. Also I'll second. Since it's a resolution, we're going to take a roll call vote. So, Mr. Romero? Yes. Calderon? Yes. Castillo? Yes. Myself? Yes. Moving on to K-17, resolution for budget and cash transfers, fiscal year 2018-19. This resolution is just a recurring one. Uh, in the case that um, any one fund was uh, minus cash, and then we can make transfer in between funds and then repay them. So that's that's just a, a recurring resolution that needs to be passed. I'm a will approve. I'll second that. So mo motion by Romero, second by myself. Mr. Romero? Yes. Calderon? Yes. Castillo? Yes. Myself, yes. Moving on to K-18, resolution of the governing board for the increase of district revolving cash fund established. Okay, board, um, this resolution, I, I bring it up to, to vote um, because we are going into a transition with escape. And so Ed Code allows us to write $1,000 checks as of right now. But with this resolution, the Ed Code then allows us to increase that to $5,000. And so our concern is that while we're still testing the payroll module in ESCAPE, um, we don't want to create a, uh, an error in the payroll and not have anyone not paid um, in the month of July or August. And so um, the resolution, uh, we can bring it back to, to take it off. I mean, I don't know that it has a date, um, but we can open it and then just say that it we can um, does it have a date, like an ending date? Because I didn't. June 30th, 2019. Okay, so it would one just year. be for this one year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And who has the whole, this whole authority to sign these checks? 
Um, right now, it's Mr. Gonzalez who signs the checks. But who will be doing the, the work? Oh, we do the work. Uh -huh. Yeah, we do the work. And we keep a log in, and there's books on that. Uh -huh. And then maybe, you know, should this pass, the administration can report back if it has been necessary as we're going oh, through transition to this Most definitely, camp. yes. We can report that okay. back. Mm -hmm. I move we approve. I'll second. So motion by Romero, second by myself. Was, oh, Romero? Yes. Calderon? Yes. Castillo? Yes. Myself, yes. Moving on to K-19 resolution regarding disposition of surplus asset, non-asset custodial ground carts at m &O department. I move we approve. Second. Motion by Romero, second by Calderon. Mr. Romero? Yes. Calderon? Yes. Castillo? Yes. Myself, yes. Moving on to K-20, resolution regarding compliance with Cal 200 settlement agreement for trimester three. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. So motion by Castillo, second by myself. Mr. Romero? Yes. Calderon? Castillo? Yes. Myself, yes. Moving on to K-21, single plan for student achievements for 2018-2019 for the following schools, Blanche Charles Elementary, Cesar Chavez Elementary, Dual Elementary, Jefferson Elementary, Kennedy Gardens Elementary, Maines Elementary, Rockwood Elementary, Enrique Camarena Junior High, William Moreno Junior High, Calexico High School, and Aurora. So move we approve. Second. Second. So motion by Romero, second by Calderon. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those in favor is Romero, Calderon, Castillo, myself. Moving on to K-22. Quarter report on Williams Uniform Complaint, January 30th, 2018. Any surprises? No complaints. We can move to approve. All second. Second. So, so right. motion by Calderon, second by Castillo. All those in favor, please state aye. 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 All those in favor, Romero, Calderon, Castillo, myself. Moving on to uh, K23, accounts payable pre-list. Move we approve. I'll second. So motion by Romero, second by myself. All those in favor, please state aye. 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 All those in favor, Romero, Calderon, Castillo, myself. Moving on to K24, adoption of job description, dean of students. Move we approve. Second. So, uh, discussion again. So we're and with this item, we're talking about dean of students for one or two positions? <laughs> two positions. Two correct. positions, okay. Thank you. Well, we're only approving the job description. Yes, yes that, that is correct. correct. Yeah. Thank you. So, motion by Romero, second by Calderon. All those in favor, please state aye. 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 All those in favor, Romero, Calderon, Castillo, myself. Um, we're going to go into closed session now, and we'll bring back, or you want to go and do a certificated right now? We'll come back to that. So, Al, reconvene to earlier closed session.